Justin, why don't you sit down? As acting chairman, I declare this meeting called to order. The agenda for today's meeting is as follows. First, the election of officers. Grant Wheeler has been nominated new chairman of the board. As new vice president and head of the oil production department, the nomination is Rena Decker. Do you remember uh, Mrs. Sullivan, Kay? Uh, oh, yes, they... They live two cabins down from our place at the lake. That's right. She's offered to keep an eye out uh, in case Barrett and Steve return to the cabin. If they do, uh, she's going to call us. Well, now, if they don't go back to the cabin, do you think they'll leave town? Well, if they leave town, they'll have to return the rental car, so the people from the rental car place will call us here. Well, what about Cody? Cody has the fellows from the highway patrol looking for Barrett's car, and if they see him, he's going to call us here immediately. So, all we can do now is wait. And we don't know how long that will be, do we? No, we don't, Kate. Um, oh. Listen, why don't you and Ginny go get some rest, and I'm going to let you know what happens the minute I hear it, okay? <laughs> Steve, I promise. Are we going back to the ranch in Colorado where you worked last summer? No. I don't think I want to go back there. Well, I thought you told Grandma that it was it was real nice there. I mean, that's what she told me. Well, the people were nice enough. I'd like to uh, work on a much bigger ranch. That's all. Where? Tell you what. There's a, there's a map in the glove compartment. Why don't you pick out a place, okay? Want to go out west? Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Well, in that case, you're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> we're going to turn the car in first. Well, then how are we going to get out west? We'll rent another one. Well, I'd like to keep this car. It's a good little car. I know, but we can't take this one out of state without a drop-off charge. We'll rent one we can drive across country and be on our way. Those in favor of Grant Wheeler as chairman of the board and chief operating officer of World Oil. Opposed? Well. Congratulations, Grant. Thank you, Mr. King. First of all, I would like to thank the members of the board for their support and their trust. And now for the next item on the agenda, the consideration of Rena Decker as vice president and head of the oil production department. Question. Yes, Mr. Davenport. May I inquire about uh, Mrs. Decker's business experience? Rena, perhaps you'd like to step outside. If you don't mind, I think I can answer questions about myself better than anyone. All right. Thank you. Gentlemen, I don't have any formal business experience. However, I have done a lot of work for charities. Mm. I've organized she fundraising. Two million dollars for that new children's wing over at Gulf Coast Hospital. That hardly qualifies her to be head of the oil production division. Iris Wheeler obviously feels she has potential, or she would not have requested her election as vice president. Is there any further discussion? Very well. Then those in favor of the election of Rena Decker as vice president and head of the oil production department so indicated. All opposed? Motion is carried. Congratulations, Rena. Well, if you prefer another car... No, I want to turn this one in. I don't want another. So if you'll just process this and get on our way. 
Well, since you have been so inconvenienced, we would be happy to give you another car free of charge for the remainder of your contract. You have five days left. We're leaving town. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Marshall? Mr. Marshall, I'm so sorry that you had engine trouble. Oh, Sonny, could you come in here, please? Uh, Sonny will take care of everything for you. Sonny, this is Mr. Marshall. Uh, he's turning in his car because he has to leave town. Uh, they're not staying in town as long as they had expected. Well, gee, I'm sorry to hear that. How you doing, son? Fine. You know, Texas is a mighty big state. You can't see much of it in one day. I was born here. I've seen a lot of Texas. They had uh, engine trouble, Sonny, so we will have to deduct a portion from their uh, bill. That's not necessary. Just complete the forms and we'll be on our way. Oh, it's no problem. We like to see our customers satisfied and happy. We're in a rush. Well, this won't take long. So, did you get to go fishing? Yeah, I caught ten fish. Uh, how would you like to stay around here and teach me a few things? Sir, <laughs> the forms? No, I'll take care of it, Sonny. Hi. I thought you were going to take a nap. Oh, I couldn't sleep. I'm so tired. I know. I just can't stop thinking about Stephen. I know, I know. I. You just didn't get any sleep last night, though, either. As long as I'm with you, I'll be all right. Mm. You know, Lurleen came by a few minutes ago. She said she'd fix us something to eat if we were hungry. I couldn't eat anything. How's Lurleen? Oh, she seems fine. I really should go and visit with her. Okay. I, uh... I went into Stephen's room. You know that picture that he and Buddy had taken when they went to camp this summer together? Mm-hmm. He took it with him. Buddy's his best friend. Well, maybe that means that he'll uh, write him a letter eventually, don't you think? Maybe it does. Honey, I want you to know that if Steve and Barrett leave town... Be Steve promised to take care of Rena after Max died. I know. So he was going to want to come back and check on that before long. He's very loyal, you know. Unless... Unless Barrett turns Steve... Against Rena, too. No, that isn't going to happen. Well, I wouldn't count on it, Ryan. Barrett hates Rena almost as much as he hates me. But Steve loves Rena almost as much as he loves you. Now, Barrett's not going to change him no matter how hard he tries. Well, he sure managed to get S Steve to question it. I mean, if Steve hadn't believed that letter that Barrett had faked, Ryan, how... How can Steve believe that we'd abandon him? Look, Barrett's timing was perfect. He was able to get everything he wanted. Steve was upset about Max dying, about us getting married, about having to move into town. Steve was just very uh, vulnerable to Barrett's tricks. I didn't help him much either. I didn't spend enough time with him. I was too busy making wedding plans and moving, and I didn't even realize that Steve needed That's me. That's not he true. Me. Now, you have to stop blaming yourself. Hello? Uh-huh. Do you think you can stall them until we get there? We're on our way. Barrett and Steve are at the rent -a car agency. Uh, Mrs. Key is going to try to stall them until we get there. I just stopped by to let you know that everything is running smoothly for Dad's surprise party tonight. Oh, good. Now, Dennis, do you need any help in setting up the video equipment so you can show Elliot's documentary? Uh, no. No, I've taken care of all that. Thanks. Uh, and Iris is taking care of the rest of the preparations? She seems to have everything under control, yeah. Well, then it looks as if you've thought of everything. Well, I hope so. I want everything to run well tonight. Oh, it will. Now, Dennis, if you'll excuse me, I have got to be running along. I'm going to be late for a very important meeting. Uh, Vicki, do you think Dad suspects anything? Not a thing. I think Elliot's in for quite a surprise. <laughs> so do I. Hey, Mr. Carrington, I'm glad you came by. I got something for you. Oh, uh, these are the irrigation project tapes? Yep. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You, you saved me a trip. Uh, Frankie, listen, you're uh, familiar with all of the film labs in Houston, aren't you? Most of them, why? Well, 
This will sound like a strange question, but uh, I was wondering where someone would go who was making a copy of a pornographic film or pictures. Well, I don't really know, Mr. Carrington. Well, you go just about anywhere if you uh, if you know one of the guys that works there. But there's no one place that specializes in that sort of thing. Mm, no. Uh, why do you want to know? You uh, thinking of going into that business, are you? <laughs> no, I was asking for a friend of mine. You, sorry, I can't help you out. Well, thanks anyway, Frankie. This for the five o'clock news or something? No, it's personal. Uh, if it's all the same to you, I'd just assume you didn't mention this to anyone. What is it, classified information? Close. The pornographic films. Cool. <laughs> Porno films, yeah, eh? Yeah, well, one of the guys down in sports is getting married. We thought we'd throw him a little surprise party. Uh -huh. Dad? What is it? I'm getting hungry. And right, we'll get something to eat soon. How long is this going to take? I don't know. Mrs. Key. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, where's Mr. Craig? Uh, he'll be right back. Well, couldn't he complete the forms? Well, he had to go and check the mileage on your car. Dad, I got a good idea. Why don't we go eat, and then when we come back, they'll be ready. Oh, for heaven's sake, Steve. I told you we're going to finish this before we eat. Now, how many times do I have to tell you that? Okay, Dad. I'm sorry, Steve. We'll be out of here in a jiffy. Why don't you go outside and wait for me out there, okay? Mr. Craig, I'd like to conclude this transaction as soon as possible. We're doing our best, Mr. Marshall. May I see your credit card, please? What do you below? Uh, where are the charge card forms, Captain? In the back. Huh. I say, uh, could I uh, rent a car for a couple of days, a uh, compact? Uh... Sure thing. I'm delighted, Rena. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Jimbo. I don't think I could have done it without your help. I think you're going to be a great asset to World Oil. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I will see you at the next board meeting. Well, well. You haven't congratulated me yet, TJ. How'd you pull it off? And why didn't you tell me or your father? To tell you the truth, I didn't even know about it myself. It was Iris's idea. She called me and she asked me to come over. And then she told me that she was planning to ask Grant to run the company. And in the course of the conversation, she asked me if I would be interested in replacing Justin as head of the production division. And as a member of the board of directors? Yes. So it all just fell right in your lap, didn't it? Except there's only one small problem. What's that? You don't know anything about the oil business. I can learn. What's the real reason behind this move, Rena? Hopefully, when I'm running the production division, World Oil will be in competition with Justin. I figure that eventually he'll have his own company, and then, then I can go after him, TJ. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. And what's more important, you don't know what you're doing to yourself. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm very happy about it. How would Max feel if he were here? If Max were here, I wouldn't have to do it. I'm doing it for him. Look, TJ, I don't need your help or your advice. Why don't you go back to Casablanca and leave me alone?
stilts? I don't know. And why is he slipping it under the door? I can't answer that either. I don't have the answers, Paige. But I'm going to try to get them. How? I'll talk to someone in the film lab at KVIK and see where you could go to reproduce photographs of that kind or a movie. Do you really think that that would help? Well, they deal with all the film labs in Houston. If that doesn't turn up anything, then I'll think of something else. But we will work it out some way. Why do I always cause so much trouble for the people I love? You've got to stop all this blaming yourself. It's true. You're not causing me any trouble. I should never have gotten you involved in this. There's no trouble to be involved with someone you love. Hello, Elliot. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. You're busy? Yes, my lawyers are meeting with the legal counsel from the FCC, and I had to answer some questions. Trouble? No, no, we're thinking of adding another station to the Victory Network. And you know how much red tape that always involves. Now, what can I do for you? Well, it's about this evening. We're going to have a wonderful time. Well, Vicky, there is a slight problem, and I was wondering if we could put our evening off. Why? Well, it's Paige. Paige? Yes, I saw her earlier today, and uh, I'm afraid she's just not feeling up to going out tonight. Well, uh, what's wrong with her? Isn't she feeling well? Oh, no, no. It isn't that. It's... What is it? Well, she's opening a new shop in the Galleria, and uh, I'm afraid she's taken on a mountain of work. Um, she's supposed to have the shop open in two weeks, and things are just unbelievably hectic right now. Well... Oh. Elliot, I would really rather not put this off. Vicky, I... Look, uh, perhaps tonight's dinner is just what Paige needs. It might even take her mind off her problems for a while. Well, you may be right. I am right. Trust me, Elliot. <laughs> and besides, I'd like to talk to Paige about this boutique. It's the first time I've heard about it. I think it's a wonderful idea. You know, KVIK does features on the Galleria all the time, and... Well, perhaps we can do a, a feature and get Paige a little publicity. Hmm? Well, that would be wonderful. Oh, please, Elliot. Try and talk her into joining us tonight. I'm sure she'll have a very good time. Well, okay, Vicky. I'll talk to Paige. I'll let you know if there's any problem. Fine. Justin, I wish that you would just calm down. My whole career has been destroyed. Our whole future has been destroyed, and all you can tell me is to calm down. Well, now, Justin, I don't think that you've been destroyed. No, you don't. I wonder what you call it, then. Your friend, Iris Wheeler, stabbed me in the back, and her friend, Rena Decker, was there to help. Oh, Justin. I thought she said that Iris would support me. Well, Justin, she promised that she would. I mean, how was I supposed to know that she'd turn against us? It's bad enough to be kicked out. But to be replaced by Rena Decker. I know, sweetheart. I, I don't understand how you could allow something like this to happen, Ashley. What did you say? This, this is not my fault, Justin. Now, I kept trying to go to see Iris Wheeler to find out if she was still going to support you, and you wouldn't let me go. You said that you could handle everything on your own. Now, you got yourself into this mess. Don't you dare blame me for it, Buster. What's all this shouting about? I've been voted out of office, Grandma. Out of the company. Well, that shouldn't surprise you, Justin. What surprises me is that you've lasted this long. That's the one you want? Yep. How about some uh, potato chips, candy? No, thanks, Dad. I just want a cheeseburger. Oh, okay. You a writer, son? Yeah, I run the mile. Not in record time, but I'm working on it. I can always spot a runner. My son's a long-distance runner, too. He got a scholarship to UT this year. I want to go to A&M. That's where my dad went. <laughs> you got a fine boy there. Thank you. Come on, son. Good luck, son. Enjoy that cheeseburger. Thanks. Hey, Dad. Yeah? Can I get another magazine, please? Sure, sure. Anything you want. Just a minute.
missed them. We stalled them as long as we could. How long ago did he leave? Only about uh, ten minutes. It couldn't be much longer than that. Did he give you any hint of where he might be headed? Not really. Uh, Mr. Marshall said that uh, he had to cut his vacation short. He had to leave town. He gave no indication of where he's headed, which direction? Not a clue. I offered to suggest to him some car rental agencies that have offices all across the country, but he said that he wasn't interested. Maybe they're not going to go by car. Did you notice, uh, did they have any suitcases? No, they didn't have any. Are you sure? Sure as that can be. There weren't any in the car, and uh, they weren't carrying any. Ryan, I know they had luggage. Where was it? Well, they might have checked them in at the bus station, the airport. Maybe they put them in a locker at the bus station. There's several motels in this area. Maybe they checked into one of those. But he told you he was leaving town, right? That's right. I just remembered something. What? Well, the boy, he said he was hungry. He kept going on about it. And Mr. Marshall said they'd go and eat as soon as they were done here. Maybe they're in uh, one of the coffee shops or, or a restaurant around here. There's, there's a few in the neighborhood. Can I use your phone? Sure. I'm going to check in with Cody at the highway patrol. Have him check all the terminals. Right ahead. Help yourself. I didn't expect your support, Grandma. You don't deserve any. You've been manipulating people for months now. I don't think you understand something, Grandma. My whole future has been destroyed. I doubt that. People like you always manage to land on their feet, Justin. Not this time, Grandma. Oh, yes, you'll survive. In a way, it's a pity. But then, too, it's a fact. You'll find your way back to power, Justin. No matter what you have to do to get there. I hope you're right. I am right. You mark my words. I just wish you'd go somewhere else to do it. Sweetheart, don't worry about anything. We don't need world oil. I had everything I wanted, Ashley. Everything. It's all gone now. You'll get it back. I'll help you. Will you? Of course I will. The one thing that Iris Wheeler, Rena Decker, couldn't take from me. What's that? A baby. Justin? What? You, uh, you made quite a bit of money while you were at World Oil, didn't you? Fair amount. But enough, say, to go five or six months and not really have to worry about anything. Yeah. I also made some very good contacts. I should be able to put together some pretty successful deals. Maybe now is the time to form Marshall Oil. What do you think?
love now. Can't ever be untied. so much and I love you so much I'll do my best to make you happy I promise I'll do my best to I do love you, Max Decker. What are you doing here? I wanted to talk to you, so I followed you. You seem to make a habit of that, don't you? Rena, all I've done since I've been back in Houston is argue with you and shout at you and then apologize. You can say that again. I'd like to change that pattern. Look, uh, can we save that for another time? I just like to be alone for a while. You sure? Yes. Got some things to think over. Okay. I understand. Rena. What? Will you be all right? Thank you, TJ. I'll be just fine. forward to building our house I'm gonna make sure it's built right <laughs> I'm gonna make that house I'm gonna build it so it lasts for generations Honey. Hmm. if we don't have any children it won't matter if the house lasts for generations or not
I promise you, my darling, you will be a daddy. I love you, Rita Decker. And I love you, Max Decker. Max? Max? No! No! Say goodbye. Thanks. All right, Cody, we'll do. Thanks a lot, huh? Ryan, what did Cody say? Uh, he's stuck in the terminals. Is, is there something that we can do? Did he say we, there must be something we can do to help? Yeah, there is. He thinks we should check around the neighborhood. They might still be, be here. Okay, let's get going. Mrs. Key, thank you again. You've been wonderful. Well, I just hope that Mr. Marshall doesn't spread the word around that my organization's inefficient. We did keep him here for quite a while. No, I'm sure that that won't happen. I... Ryan and I will make sure that we tell everybody how helpful you've been. Thank uh, you so thank much. You. <laughs> and I hope everything turns out okay. Thanks. Excuse me. Where on earth do we start? Well, there seem to be quite a few coffee shops and restaurants in the next block. Let's start there. What's wrong? Nothing. You mad at me? No, no, no. I'm just tired, that's all. Well, maybe when we get back to the motel, you should take a nap. Yeah, I guess that's what I'll do. Dad? <sighs> what, son? Why? Why did we have to? Why couldn't we stay at the cabin another day if we're not if we're not leaving town yet? A well, motel has a nice swimming pool. Maybe we could go for a swim later. Okay. Thanks. And yeah, that is more food than you had all week. Well, I guess I'm used to Grandma's cooking. You don't like my cooking? It's okay, but it's not as good as Grandma's or Mom's. Well. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to practice and get better. Why are you only having coffee? I'm not hungry. Dad, when we get back to the motel, can I call Buddy? He'll be in school. No, he'll be home by then. No, I think you better wait until tomorrow to call him. Why? Why can't I call him this Because I don't want you to call him. That's why. Okay, Dad. Eat your dinner. Come in. Hello. Well, hello, sweetheart. Something wrong? Yeah. Are you sure? Be all right, Mama. You've been crying. Why? Did you hear about the board meeting? Yes, I heard. I suppose TJ called you. As a matter of fact, he did. Well, what do you think? It 
came as such a surprise, I really don't know what to think. <laughs> surprised me, too. Justin got a little something of what he deserves. Yes, he did. Does that make you happy? Did for a while. I don't think it matters anymore. I hope you mean that, sweetheart. Honey? Went out to the cabin today. Oh, why didn't you tell me? I would have gone with you. I know. Something I had to do by myself, Mama. I had to make some decisions on my own. Did you make any? Mm-hmm. Can't live at the cabin. I'm sure of that now. Our home is yours. You can stay there for as long as you like. I know. I went to the cemetery, Mama. It's the first time I've been able to go. I haven't been able to since. I know. I've decided that uh, I can't live the rest of my life mourning Max's death. Max wouldn't have wanted that. He uh, left life too much. Yes, he did. Oh, Mama. It's so hard to say goodbye. Oh, I know. Uh, check, please. Dad, I haven't finished uh, yet. Check, please. Just take your time, son. We're gonna just get the check, that's all. I wonder what Grandma's doing now. I don't know. Dad? What? Don't you miss Grandma? Yes, I do. Then why can't we live on the ranch with her? Because Uncle Justin and Ashley live there now. Uncle Justin was teaching me how to jump. He told me he used to have a thoroughbred horse, the finest in the state. <laughs> yes. Won a lot of blue ribbons. Lady Kate. Lady Kate? Yeah, they named her after Grandma. I think we could all live on the ranch together. No, Steve. I think we'd be much better off if we uh, lived somewhere else. I don't. Besides, it'd be too hard for you to see your mother. No, I'd like to see her. And does she want to see you? You read the letter. She wants to have Ryan Connor's children. Make a new family. There isn't going to be time for her in your life. I'm sorry, son, but you just have to accept the way that she feels about you, that's all. Thank you. I don't believe Mom doesn't love me anymore. Yeah, I remember that kid. He was a runner. Do you know what direction they were headed? No, I didn't notice. Well, wait a minute, though. He said he wanted a cheeseburger. Maybe they went to one of the coffee shops down the street. Thank you. Uh, what's going on? Uh, it'd be a long story, but uh, thanks a lot for your help. Oh, you're welcome. Son. I never thought your mother would stop loving me either. But she did. I think Ryan Connor's responsible. And Rena Decker. Rena? Yes. She never liked me, you know. When she and your mother got to be such good friends, Rena said terrible things about me. She poisoned your mother's mind against me. And Rena's a good friend of Ryan's, too. Rena loves me, she told me. But she never said bad things about you to me. She's too clever for that. And. She may have told you that she loved you, but it's not true. Dad. I don't enjoy having to tell you these things, son. But the sooner you face up to them, the better. Now, I know how much it hurts to hear them. 
You have to know where you stand with people. And that's why I came back to Houston. Take care of you. I love you. I support you. You just... Forget about your mother and Lena Decker. We'll, we'll make a good life together, I promise you. Now finish your dinner, okay? <clears throat> I haven't seen anybody around here fitting that description. Keep an eye out, though, for you. Of course. Yeah, there, there's a couple of coffee shops over on the next block here. If they checked into a motel, I'll bet it has a swimming pool. Steve would insist on that. What's wrong? Wait, I haven't finished my dinner yet. That's all right. Yet. If you're still hungry, we'll get, a, get something later. Come on. No, at least let me finish my milk. Come on. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Hey, you want to help me with this, maybe? Yeah. Set it up. Okay. So, what time is Mr. Carrington coming for you? Oh, uh, about 6.30, I think. Hmm? You know, I think he is the most distinguished man I've ever met. Well, he's so intelligent. He's such a gentleman. He's a good friend. Are you worried about your meeting with Mrs. Oliver? No. I just thought you seemed a little distracted. I am a little distracted. I have something on my mind. Is it anything that I can help you with? No, Nita. I only wish it were. Excuse me. I don't know I'm what sorry. else to do, Mrs. Wheeler. I tried everything I could think of when I talked to Dennis this afternoon. Where did you see him? At the house. He stopped by after you left. He wanted to know if you wanted a ride to the board meeting. What did you talk about? Oh, I don't know. I offered... Uh, my assistance in helping him set up this video cassette system and everything and he said it was all under control you didn't let on that you knew what he was planning did no, you of course i didn't i even offered to go and be his housekeeper whatever for because i thought if i could get a hold of his keys i could go into his apartment and search the place for that pornographic film page made oh vivi i really wish you hadn't done that why not because in the first place it's not a film that we're looking for it's not? No. If, if Dennis is planning to substitute Paige's film for Elliot's documentary, it means that he's had it transferred onto a video cassette. Oh, what if you've made him suspicious? Oh, no, Dennis would never suspect me. Well, I hope not. Because we have to find that cassette, and if he's suspicious, it will make our task impossible. Mrs. Wheeler, what are we going to do if we find this cassette? going to put this one in its place. What is this? It's another cassette. I How's have everything a... going? Hi. Hi, Dennis. Everything is going just fine. Hi, hi. I'd rather have a booth or a table? Uh, we want some information. What do you mean, information? We're looking for a man who has a little boy with him. The man's uh, dark, tall, he has a full beard. The boy's about 11 years old, fair, reddish blonde hair. Sure. You're not cops, are you? I don't want any trouble. No, no, we're not police. I'm the boy's mother. I, I'd just like to talk to him. Now yeah, they're here. They're sitting right over here, but that's funny. They're gone. Where were they? They're right here. I didn't see him leave. Look, the boy hasn't even finished. They're probably in the men's room. Where is it? It's back there to the left. You're sure he's not going to cause any trouble? No, he won't. Hey, what is this? Some sort of custody battle? Sort of. My sister got involved in a battle over her kid. That's a real mess. You want coffee, soda, something? No, thank you. You sure got a good-looking boy. Oh, thank you very much. I'm not there. Ryan, what do you mean you're not there? We were outside. We would have seen him come out. Maybe we went out the back way. Let's go. 
Steve, come on. I nearly tripped over this thing. Here, let me do it. I can do it myself. Why are we leaving in such a hurry? And why are we leaving by the back door? I'll explain later. Well, why can't you explain Steve, now? Steve, come on. What time is Elliot supposed to arrive? Vicky says that they should be here by 8 o'clock. Oh, well, that's good. It should leave us plenty of time. For what? Well, for any last-minute arrangements. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. I'm sure that Vivian and Alfredo have everything under control. Speaking of Alfredo, I better go and check on his seating arrangements. Oh, that's a good idea, Vivian. Why don't you do that? Okay. Excuse me. You don't seem very happy. Why should I be? Now, you listen to Dennis. Me. Why can't you give up this fool idea of embarrassing Paige? To show that dreadful pornographic film... It is film. not a fool idea. These people are my friends. There's nothing to worry about. Once the film is shown, I promise you, I promise you, I will take full responsibility. No one will ever know you were involved. They're very important people. That's the general idea. Don't you realize the scandal you're going to cause? If it's a scandal you're worried about, then maybe you ought to talk to Paige. After all, she's the one who made the film in the first place. Why are you really doing this? I told you. I want Dad to see Paige for what she really is. All right, Paige. I have this mailing list all done. Oh, oh great, Nina. Super, thank you. Oh, uh, Nina. Yeah. Uh, I know it's late, but I think it might be a good idea if you were to stay around and meet Mrs. Oliver. No, it's all right. I'm in no rush. Well, you'll probably have a lot of dealings with her in the next couple of weeks. Of course, that is if she accepts my proposal. Well, now, I'm sure she will. I mean, making the opening of the boutique a benefit for the Orphan Charity Fund, that's a wonderful idea. Well, if we can pull this one off, it'll be to everyone's advantage. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to make a pile of money for a worthy cause and bring all those society ladies in that we need for customers. Yeah, the only trouble is Mrs. Oliver didn't sound all that enthusiastic on the phone. Well, we're just going to have to see to it that she gets enthused. <laughs> Oh, I wonder what kind of woman she is. I don't know. According to Vicki Bellman, Mr. Oliver is in real estate. But Mrs. Oliver is from old Texas money. Uh -huh. Maybe that's her. <laughs> Mrs. Oliver? Yes. Hello, I'm Paige Carrington. Oh, how do you do? Please, come in. Yes. So nice to meet you at long last. We've spoken so many times on the phone. Oh, <laughs> uh, we, we have a lot of work to do before the boutique is finished, Mrs. Yes, so I see. <laughs> Would you like to see the, the plans? It might give you a better idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished. Uh, that won't be necessary. Uh, oh, here is my assistant, Nita Wright. Oh, I see. Well, how do you do? How do you do, yes. Mrs. Oliver? Can I get you some coffee or some tea? I think not. <laughs> oh, please, have a seat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, then, uh, have you had a chance to think about my proposal? Well, of course I have. That's why I'm here. But um, before I commit myself to anything, however, I'd like to know more about your boutique. <laughs> oh, of course. What did you say the name of it was? Uh, Page. Page. Page one. P-A-I-G-E. One. Page one. Yes. I see. Well, 
That's rather cute. <laughs> but I hope it's not going to be one of those garish places with uh, flashing lights and that dreadful disco music blaring at you all oh, the time. Oh, no, no, Mrs. Oliver. On the contrary, uh, page one is going to be very sedate. I see. Well, that's fortunate because um, we're dealing with orphans and we have to be very careful of the atmosphere we allow our charity uh, to associate with. Oh, I, I quite understand. Oh, Mrs. Oliver, we plan on having the very best clientele. You know, it's very difficult these days to find a merchant who knows what real quality is. Everybody wants to be so trendy, so, so with it. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you mean, Mrs. Oliver. Of course, I'm so spoiled. I can recall when Eve opened up his first salon in Paris. Now there was someone who knew quality. <laughs> We lost them. Honey. Don't get upset. We were so close. Look, we know they're in our car now, so it's going to be easier to find them. All right. We're going to split up again and look for them now. I'm going to meet you back at the Kia car in half an hour, okay? Okay. <laughs> oh, Elliot, I wish she could have been there. She was just unbelievable. <laughs> she really was, Mr. Carrington. <laughs> every, every other word was, I see. I see. <laughs> I see, I see. And she said, she said, I do hope, right? It's not one of those garish places with flashing lights and everything. <laughs> right, we come um, uh, um, blaring disco music. Oh, yes. I uh, must say, Mrs. Oliver sounds like quite an experience. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh I haven't oh. laughed so hard in, in I don't know how long. <laughs> Oh, the minute she left, it was all me and I could do for it. <laughs> falling down and starting to laugh. Well, she really picked up your mood. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, darling. <clears throat> it must seem a little foolish, but she was rather peculiar. Yes, she I gather, I gather. Oh, and then she started <laughs> reminiscing about the good old days when oh, Eve yes. Saint Laurent opened mm. her boutique yes. oh, in, oh, in, in Paris. Oh. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, <laughs> and she went on for about 15 minutes. We thought she wasn't going to stop. Well, what, what about the most important thing? Did she agree to uh, to let the Orphans Fund sponsor the opening? Well, <laughs> she never really gave me a definite answer. She said that she was going to have to go back to the committee and talk to the ladies. Right. I think, though, we pretty much sold her. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, but I did the craziest thing out here. What? Well, uh, you know, she asked me what I was going to call the place. Yeah, you and Nita have talked about that. But we never came up with an idea. Well, what did you tell her? I told her that I thought I was going to call it page one. I like that. I think it's a great idea that Paige can hold this whole string of boutiques, page ones, page two, page three, <laughs> and page... Yeah. Well, now we have two things to celebrate this evening. Oh, yes. Mrs. Oliver's possible backing of the opening uh, mm -hmm. and a new name. <laughs> Oh, uh, speaking of celebrating, <laughs> we better go or we're going to be late because mm -hmm. I have to go back to the hotel and change. Right. Well, you go ahead. I'll close up the shop. Are you okay. sure you don't mind? Oh, it's fine. I got some phone calls to make. You go ahead and have a nice time. <laughs> Thank you. See you in the morning. Mm -hmm. All right? Bye-bye. Good night. Here comes trouble. Keep an eye on things in the dining room, baby. What are you trying to do to us, Mrs. Wheeler? Lower your voice, Ashley. This is a public place. I want some answers, and I want them right now. You promised to help us, and you never intended to keep that promise. You let Justin walk into that board meeting thinking that he still had a job, that he was going to run the production division, that he had your support, and you never intended to keep it. Ashley, I had no choice. When Grant agreed to take over the company, he did so on the condition that Justin be replaced. Dennis gave his proxy to Grant, and Ryan gave his to TJ. They had the majority vote. There was nothing I could do. You could have warned us. Justin could have been prepared. There wasn't time. Everything happened so quickly. Oh, and I suppose the only person available to take Justin's position is Rena Decker? Grant and Ryan wanted Rena on the board. Oh, and you didn't have anything to say about it. I, I was outnumbered. What could I do? You've gone against a lot bigger odds than that. It wasn't worth arguing about.
Justin's future is nearly destroyed and you don't think that it's worth arguing about? Ashley, Justin is a very clever man. He has a bright future ahead of him. It's just not at World Oil. Now, when you calm down and give this some thought, I'm sure you'll realize that I'm right. You know what I do realize? That I was a fool to ever trust you. I was a fool to think that you ever cared about me or anybody. I do care about you. Sure you do. When it suits your purposes. When you don't have to go on the line for it. Because when you do, it's goodbye, Ashley. Goodbye, Justin. <sighs> goodbye, Mrs. Wheeler. Paige told me that uh, you and Billy Joe have just recently gotten a divorce. Yes, we have. I'm sorry to hear about that. Paige seems to like both you and Billy Joe. You know, Mr. Carrington, I still care about him. But sometimes two people who care about each other have to separate for everybody's good. And I guess this is just one of those times. I know how difficult that can be. So does Paige. I suppose you know that she and my son Dennis have recently come through a difficult divorce themselves. Yeah, I know. Does she and Dennis, do they ever see each other anymore? Well, not very often. They run into each other occasionally. But Dennis is still very uncomfortable around Paige. Do you think he's ever going to get over that? Well, I thought so in the beginning, but now I begin to wonder. I don't think Billy Joe isn't very comfortable around me either. But how about you? You've been divorced from Mrs. Wheeler. How do you feel around her now? Oh, I don't have any problem being around Iris now. Billy Joe won't even see me now. I keep thinking he's going to get over it, but... Joe. Uh, 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 where's Mrs. Carrington? Oh, she's gone for the evening. Oh, she is, uh, she's not going to be back soon then? Uh, no. Can I help you with anything? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can tell her that I, that I dropped by. Uh, do you want to come in? Uh, no. No, no. Uh, hey, what's the matter? Uh. I'm, I'm not going to bite. Uh. No, I, I, I gotta get to work. Uh, I, I'm real busy. Well, I guess don't I... you have a few minutes? I mean, since you're here, I'd like to talk to you. I don't think we've got a whole lot to talk about. Oh, Billy Joe. I mean, Look, if you wanted to talk to me, you could have done that before you got hired that lawyer of yours. Can we just forget about that? No, I okay? can't forget about it. I, I'm not ever going to forget about it. You divorced me, Nita. And you did that for no good reason. Look, Billy Joe, I don't want to go through all this again. No. Well, what do you want? I want us to be friends. <sighs> you know, Mr. Carrington says you're doing very well in your talk show. I watch it whenever I can. You look real cute. Nita, there, there's no way we're going to be friends. Well, maybe not now, but it, at least we shouldn't be enemies. Uh... You don't need to worry about that. I'm not your enemy, but I can't be your friend. Um, I don't want to see you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Why? Because you hurt me, Nita. You hurt me a whole lot. I'm not going to give you a chance to hurt me again. I didn't mean to hurt you, Billy Joe. Hey. Are you going to keep sending Ruby to pick up Billy Joe Jr. when you want to see him? Yeah, that, that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to lose you. 
Well, you're a little, little, little late with that, honey. Because that's exactly what you've done. Have I? Have I really? Of course, Rena. I'll tell Jenny that you called. Yes, dear. Goodbye. Hello. Where's Justin? Well, he's down at the stable talking to Guy. Where have you been? Town. What's Justin going to do about a job? <sighs> well, he really doesn't have to worry that much about it. He's got enough money saved up that he doesn't have to rush into anything. Oh. Well, are you two planning to stay on out here at the ranch? Why not? He owns 60% of it. But he doesn't want to be a rancher. He wants to be an oil man. Well, he can't drill out here. I own the mineral rights, so what's the point in staying? Because he wants to raise his children out here. Oh, yes. His children. <laughs> Ashley, I think Justin deserved to lose his job at World Oil. He was dishonest, and he framed Ryan Connor. Oh, please, Mrs. Marshall. I, I really don't feel like hearing a lecture on Justin right now. Ashley. Justin has had just about all of the disappointment he can stand. If you're not pregnant, and I suspect you're not, you'd better do something about it. There's no point in getting upset, Mrs. Wheeler. I'm upset enough for both of us. Vivian, are you sure you're trying? Yes. I have been watching Dennis very closely. I don't think he's got that cassette with him. It has to be somewhere. I think he's hidden it. He hasn't left the club at any time, has he? No, not since he got here. He's gone into the bar a couple of times, but that was just checking on things with Alfredo. He always comes right back here. We have to be very careful not to make him suspicious. Oh, don't worry. I always have a very good excuse whenever I go in that bar with him. I wonder if he's hidden it here in the dining room. I don't think so. I've tried searching. This is not very easy because Dennis is here. I've tried looking in the bar. Alfredo always asks me if I've lost something. The thing that worries me is what we'll do if Dennis doesn't go for the cassette until the last minute. There's no way we'll be able to make the switch then. Well, let's hope he doesn't do that. Oh, Vivian, this whole thing is such a mess. How could he do this to me, my own son? Why don't you just tell Dennis not to show the film? I don't dare. If I refuse to go along with him at this point... He'll tell everyone that I agreed to help him in return for his vote to oust Ryan from World Oil. You can just deny that. No, I can't. Why not? Because I signed a statement to that effect. Oh, Mrs. Wheeler, how could you have done that? Doesn't matter how. The fact is, I did. Oh, brother, you surprised me, Mrs. Wheeler. You told me never to sign anything unless I Where have... is the video cassette I gave you? What is that? To hide the cassette. This way I can keep my eye on it and no one will suspect. Don't let it out of your sight. No, I won't. I promise. Good. Hey, guys, bring it in here. Put the monitor over there and put the VCR right back here, all right? What is that thing? That's a video cassette recorder, Vivian. It's for showing my father's documentary. I'll get this out of your way. Mrs. Wheeler, I guess I'll just be in the bar in case you need me for anything. TJ, I don't want to stay. You couldn't wait to leave your parents' house to come to this party. That's because Mama told me that Paige was coming by with Elliot for a drink. You don't get along with Paige? She's a tramp. Rena. Believe me, she is. I don't understand why Elliot has anything to do with her. Come on, let's get out of here. You told Iris that you'd be here. I know, but it was a mistake. I can't do it, TJ. Rena, you can't hide in your parents' house forever. I know. You are on the board of World Oil now. You're head of production. Half of your time is going to be spent in social gatherings like this. I'm just not ready yet. Not tonight, anyway. Look, I'll take you home if you really want, but I think you ought to stay and give it a shot. Mrs. Decker, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you, Vivi. This is uh, T.J. Canfield. He works in my daddy's law. Wow, well, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's in that? This is for later. Have you seen Mrs. Wheeler yet? No, I. Uh, well, we just got here, so I... She's going to really be cheered up. 
Mrs. Marshall, what makes you think that I'm not pregnant? Instinct. Well, your instincts are wrong this time. For your sake, I hope so. I know how much it will mean to Justin to have children. I've been watching them with Steve. And his care and concern have surprised me and pleased me. Oh, Justin's been so upset about Barrett taking Steve off. We'll find Steve and we'll explain to him about Barrett. He'll understand. Well, bless his heart. I know he just must be so confused right now. You're pretty confused yourself right now, aren't you? No. As a matter of fact, I think that I probably see things more clearly than I ever have. There's not anybody in the world that you can really trust except yourself. If you depend on other people, you're only going to get hurt. That's pretty cynical philosophy. You know, in the long run, it's not going to make you any happier. I am so tired of people disappointing me that I think care about me. You mean Iris Wheeler? Yes, Iris Wheeler. Well, Rena managed to reconcile her differences with Iris Wheeler. She didn't think she could, but she did. Maybe one of these days you'll be reconciled with Iris, too. Oh, no. She betrayed me and Justin. I'll never forgive her for that. Excuse me, please. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Wheeler. I have crawled all over that kitchen. I cannot find the cassette that Dennis brought. Unless he's locked it in the wine room. I tried to search the bar, but there are too many people in there. I checked that bar out earlier. I know it's not there. Well, it has to be somewhere. The coat room. There's nothing in there but hangers and a couple of old boots. You know, if you want to know what I think, I think that he's put it away someplace private, like Alfredo's office. No, I don't think so. Dennis wouldn't take that chance. Alfredo is in and out of there all the time. He'd find it. So if Alfredo found it, he wouldn't know what it was. Where is Dennis now? He's in the bar, I think. Well, go keep an eye on him and don't put that down, all right? Uh... So we'll just have to hope that... Uh... Cody finds him. Well, Cody called just before you two got here. He's checking all the rental car places in the area. We checked as many of them as we could. No one had ever seen Barrett. Well, I called Mrs. Sullivan at the lake and asked her to keep an eye out in case Steve and Barrett came back to the cabin. I don't think they will. They're gone, Kate. They've left Houston. I may never see my son again. Honey, come on. You know you don't believe that. We were so close, Ryan, and we lost them. We well, lost the next time we're going to find them. There won't be a next time. Now that Barrett knows that we're looking for him, he's going to be very careful. And after a while, Steve's going to miss you and he'll call. Steve thinks we're on our honeymoon. He thinks we're, we'll be in Acapulco for three weeks. Okay, well, then he'll call Kate or he'll call Rena. Or maybe Barrett will call Kate. He usually calls once or twice a month, Jenny. Well, he won't call now. Listen, Kate, uh, do you know the name of that doctor the Barrett was seeing in Colorado? I have it in my address book. Good. I think we ought to notify him in case Barrett tries to contact him. Well, and even if he doesn't, he may have an idea of where we could find Barrett, where he would go. Maybe the doctor will be able to tell us if Barrett's stable enough to take care of Steve. I don't think he is. Ginny, you're just going to have to stop imagining the worst. I'll, I'll go get the doctor's name and address out of my telephone book. Want a glass of wine? No. Honey, uh, did Rena tell you that Iris was going to appoint her to the board of directors and uh, make her head of the production division of World Oil? Rena and I just talked about Stephen. What do you think about that? Well, I think she's going to have a pretty, pretty tough time. Rena's smart. She's a quick learner. She's got TJ and Stryker to help her, and you'll help her too, won't you? 
Mm-hmm. As long as she didn't take this job to uh, destroy Justin. Honey, Justin's been fired. That's enough for Rena. Well, I sure hope so. <sighs> Kate told me that Rena's going to Iris's party tonight. Mm. It'll be the first time she's been out socially since Max died. Well, I hope this is the beginning of a, of a whole new life for Rena. No, I think it's ridiculous. Iris, I didn't realize that you'd invited Ricky Decker. Well, I thought it might be nice to have a little entertainment. What's this about entertainment? Grant was just asking about Ricky Decker. I don't want any singing. Uh, I thought it might distract from the main attraction. Oh, what is that? My father's documentary called Tiger. It's about international terrorism. Really? I missed that when it played. Yeah, well, I think you're in for a surprise, then. Oh, I'd rather doubt that. I'm an old fan of your father. I used to read his syndicated column long before he won the Pulitzer. Elliot and Vicky should be here shortly. Yes, so should Paige. A lot of people that I don't seem to know here, Iris. Mm-hmm. This, this group over here. Uh, they're friends of Elliot's from KVIK. Well, I wonder if it might not be a good idea to go over the entrance and create some sort of a Or maybe reception. we could even hide. That's a little immature, don't you? Everyone, if I could have your attention, please. <coughs> My father should be here any minute. I thought it might be a nice idea if we all just kind of gathered over by the door. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> what is this? What's going it's on? a party. Your friends decided to get together and help you celebrate the reward. Did you know about this? No, I, I'm just as surprised as you are. Thank <laughs> you, dear. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I'm all very proud of you, Dad. Well, I, I can't believe all this is, is for me. Oh, you don't have to believe it. All you have to do is have a good time. Come on, let's see what we can do about getting you a glass of champagne. <laughs> oh, congratulations. 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 picture that he and Buddy had taken when they went to camp this summer together? Mm-hmm. He took it with him. Buddy's his best friend. Well, maybe that means that he'll uh, write him a letter eventually, don't you think? Maybe it does. Honey, I want you to know that if Steve and Barrett leave town... Before... Steve promised to take care of Rena after Max died. I know. So he... He's going to want to come back and check on that before long. He's very loyal, you know. Unless... Unless Barrett turns Steve against Rena, too. No, that isn't going to happen. Well, I wouldn't count on it, Ryan. Barrett hates Rena almost as much as he hates me. But Steve loves Rena almost as much as he loves you. Now, Barrett's not going to change him no matter how hard he tries. We sure managed to get Steve to question it. I mean, if Steve hadn't believed that letter that Barrett had faked. Ryan, how, how can Steve believe that we'd abandon him? Look, Barrett's timing was perfect. He was able to get everything he wanted. Steve was upset about Max dying, about us getting married, about having to move into town. Steve was just very uh, vulnerable to Barrett's tricks. I didn't help him much either. Justin was pretty badly shaken by that board meeting. Justin got exactly what he deserved. That's what I told him. Where are Ashley and Justin now? Out to dinner. I think I'll uh, talk to Ryan. What 
the doctor say? I couldn't reach him, so I left a message on the service, but I did talk to one of the men who works in Stryker's office in Denver. Now, he knows the doctor, so he's going to try and reach him and explain the whole problem to him. Well, I don't think that Barrett will do Steve any harm. Barrett has already done Steve harm by turning him against me and, and tricking him with that fake letter. Well, even so, I don't think Steve Stephen will... had a lot of trouble dealing with Barrett's moods last spring, Kate. He's terrified of his father. I don't think he can handle this on his own. Listen, I'm going to call Cody and see if he's worked out anything with the car rental agencies. Okay. I think I'd better go and start supper. Hello? Yeah, this is Ryan. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah, I'll tell her. Um, Cody's found out where Barrett rented the car from. Uh, apparently, they've headed for Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia? Yeah, Barrett made arrangements to turn the car into the rental office down there. Ryan, why would they go to Richmond, Virginia? I don't know. Maybe Barrett wanted Steve to see your father. My father's in Geneva. Well, maybe you didn't know that. We have to go to Richmond right now. We have to be there when Barrett and Steve arrive. Honey, it's going to take them a couple of days to get down to Richmond. Now, just calm down. We've got time. We'll fly down to Richmond tomorrow, okay? Dad, I thought you told the guy at the rent-a-car place that we were going to Richmond, Virginia. That's right. Then why are we heading west on Route 10? Because I've changed my mind. Oh. Then where are we going? Montana. How come? Well, I just remembered a very good friend of mine from the Army. He has a ranch out there. And from everything that he said about it, I, I, I really think that you're going to like living there. You know, Montana is a lot like Texas. How long do you think it'll take us to drive back? The difference is make. We're not in any hurry, are we? You know, you and I have hardly had much time to get to know each other. Now that we do, why don't we just take it easy and see the sights, okay? And this is Margaret Hudson. Margaret is one of our anchor persons on the 11 o'clock news. Oh, yes, I know. You have the daytime interview show, is that correct? That's right. Who's news in Houston? In fact, I was hoping to line up your daughter for an interview, now that she's on the board of World Oil. Rena's on the board of World Oil? Yes, Elliot, it's true. The board of directors confirmed it this afternoon. Well, that's wonderful. I'll have to find Rena and offer my congratulations. Oh, I can't wait to interview her. Uh, Margaret, perhaps I'd better speak with Rena first. Oh, maybe we both could. I, I think she's free right now. Oh, come on. Uh, Margaret. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. How are you doing? I am having a wonderful time. Good. Don't worry about the other thing. We'll get to the bottom of it. I'm not worried about anything tonight. Good. You, sir, have a lot of friends. Yes, I suppose I have. I wonder where Dennis disappeared to. Don't know. Haven't seen him since we arrived. I must admit he and Iris have been very civil to me tonight. Well, this is very public. Iris is a great one for keeping up appearances. Alfredo, have you seen Vivian? No, ma'am. Perhaps she's in the kitchen. No, I've already checked in there. Well, let me ask the waiters in the bar. Thank you. Somebody let me out of here! Somebody! Oh, not! <laughs> Film? Every juicy bit of it. I had it put on this cassette. I think it would be better if you waited a while. If I wait a while, all of my guests will leave. When you show that film, I can guarantee you they will leave. All right, then. They'll all be that much wiser for the experience. And so will Dad. Dennis. Everyone, let me have your attention. As you all know, we're here to help my father celebrate a very special award. And as a special tribute to him,
For those of you who haven't seen it, and for those of you who have, I've arranged a special showing of his documentary. So if you'll all gather around the monitors, we'll get started. I wish you hadn't done that, Dennis. I'm afraid you got these people here under false pretenses. Oh, Elliot, don't be modest. It's a wonderful piece of journalism, and you know it. If you'll all follow me, please. Your best seats in the house. Dennis. Enjoy. Have you found Vivian? I'm sorry, Mrs. Wheeler. Elliot, I am so excited. I thought you'd seen this before. I have, but... I'm excited about seeing it again with you. Alfredo, if you'll dim the lights, please. We're ready to start. Oh, Elliot. Is that the airline schedule? Yes, I'm trying to find a flight out tomorrow. Well, even if Barrett and Steve drive nonstop, it'll take them a day or so to get to Richmond. I know that, Kate, but I want to be there when they arrive at the car rental place to turn the car in. Looks like there's a flight at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to call the airlines and make a reservation. We've been having a powwow over what to do about supper. Oh, I hope you come up with some good ideas. I'm fresh out of any. We want uh, barbecue from Burley's, right, Lurleen? Right. And if y'all give me your orders, I'll jump in the truck and drive down to get it. Hey, Barkey, give me another beer. You've had enough beer and more than enough booze. Why don't you go home and sleep it off, Bubba? Because I just got started. Well, then go someplace else. Burley's not in business to serve drunks. It'll be out in a minute, man. Alfredo, if you'll lower the lights, we are ready to start. Thank you, Alfredo. Here we go. <laughs> what is this? Now, Dennis, don't cause a scene. <laughs> it's Dennis. Yes. Now, I thought everyone would be interested in seeing the first documentary Elliot made. <laughs> uh, home movies of Dennis when he was a baby. What a great idea. <laughs> Much more entertaining than my documentary on terrorism. <laughs> what about the documentary? Well, the truth of the matter is, I misplaced the documentary. I am sorry, Elliot, but I'm afraid this is the only film you're going to see tonight. Well, it's fine with me. <laughs> I think this deserves to win an award as well. You are not going to get away with this. Oh, she's so cute, darling. <laughs> Hello. 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 What do you eat, honey? I don't want anything to eat. And I don't want Lorraine going down to Burley's by herself. I'm just going down the road, Jenny. Come on, I'll go with her. I've got some cold chicken in the refrigerator, Jenny. I'll make some sandwiches. Well, I guess that just leaves you and me, Lily. I'll get it. Hello? When are you going to Richmond, Jenny? Uh, tomorrow morning. Well, do you think that Barrett's taking Steve to see your father? My father's in Geneva, and Steve knows that. I can't imagine why Barrett's going to Richmond, Virginia. Oh, well, after all, he knows more about thoroughbreds than anyone in the country. He should be able to find a, a position in Virginia. Well, he can stay in Virginia as long as he wants, but I'm bringing Steve back here. Right. Who was it? Uh, that was Cody. Uh, one of the cars spotted there, but they lost him. Lost them? Yeah, one of the highway patrol car teams saw them pulling out of a gas station. They didn't want to rouse any suspicions by following too closely, but they were too careful and uh, Barrett outsmarted them. But it doesn't matter because we know they're going to Richmond, Virginia, right? No, they're not. But they have to 
return the car at the rental place. Barrett and Steve were headed in another direction, northwest. Steve told one of the guys at the gas station that uh, they're headed for Montana. I'm going to Burley's. Oh, Elliot, that's an adorable shot. How did you ever manage to get it? Pure luck. <laughs> You're just being modest. <laughs> I stopped you from making a fool of yourself. Just tell me where Paige's film is. I don't know. I don't believe that for a minute. You arranged this whole thing. I couldn't let you go through with it. Now, if that means you'll show everyone the agreement I signed with you, then go ahead and do it. But I simply couldn't let you do this to yourself. You weren't thinking about me. You were thinking about yourself, as usual. The only thing you were worried about was being embarrassed socially. That's why you switched that film on me. Oh. That's not true. You've been my main concern in all this. You must believe that. I don't. You're my son. I love you, and I, I can't stand seeing you so tormented. Then why? Why didn't you just let me go ahead with my plan? Paige. Mom, Paige is the reason I'm tormented. And I'm not going to stop until she's destroyed. But it's yourself you're destroying, not Paige. You need help, darling. Yes. And I came to you for that help, and you betrayed me. No, I, I don't see it that way. Don't you? No, no. The only thing I did wrong was to agree to go along with your plan in the first place. But you hate Paige as much as I do. Yes, yes, it's, it's true. There's no love lost between Paige and me. But, darling, there are better ways of dealing oh, with her than causing no a public other scandal. There is no way. There is no other way. You can see the way she clutches onto Dad all the time, can't you? I saw them sitting together. And you together. see the way she is with him. She, she, she'll clutch on him and clutch oh, on darling. him. Darling, look, look, that may be true. Look, I am not going to let her destroy Dad! Shh! Calm down now, people will hear you, Dennis. Look, I don't care who hears me. Dennis, I want what is best for you. And if you had gone through with showing that film, you would have regretted it. Think you have it all figured out, don't you? Well, I had a copy of that film made just in case. Iris, what's going on? I can't stand it. Every time we get close to finding Steve, he and Barrett slip away. I keep telling you we're going to find them, honey. When? I don't know, but right now we just have to wait until we receive further well, word. I hate not being able to do something. I do too. Right now, Code of Cody's notifying all of his friends out in the Northwest, other highway patrolmen. And, uh, he goes to all these national association meetings, so he knows quite a few people. Don't worry. We're going to get Steve back soon. Honey, I'm so sorry. I understand. <sighs> it's just... Well, I feel so helpless. Jenny... You've done everything you could. Maybe we better go back to town. Why not leaving until we get some barbecue from Burley's? Besides, I think Kate will like a little company, wouldn't she, Kate? Yes, I sure would. Let's stay here for a while then, all right? Okay. Still don't think we should have let Lurleen go to Burley's by herself. Oh, she's going to be fine. <laughs> I've talked to Lurleen about her grandfather. I'd like you to help her if you could. Well, sure. What can I do? Well, her grandfather's getting more and more irresponsible. I think it would be to both their interest if everything was in Lurleen's name. The money that's in the bank, as well as the property. You want me to handle the uh, legal arrangements? Could you? What does Lurleen think about all this? Well, she's already taking care of everything. I'd just like her to have the legal as well as the moral responsibility. Sure. I'd like, do anything I can to help her. Mm -hmm. I heard Justin Marshall got fired today. Yeah, I heard. Where'd you get that beer? I walked around behind the bar, I reached into the cooler, and I took it. Don't you ever do that again, Bubba. Well, I'm going to pay for it. Yeah, and you're going to leave right now, or I'm going to call the sheriff. Burley runs a family establishment, and he hates drunks. All right, all right. I'll go down to the dude drop in. Always glad to see me there. Hey, Chad. Hey, Burley. 
Here's my order to go, please. Ah, uh, sure thing. You want a soda pop or something while you're waiting? No, thanks. Well, I won't be long. Hey, Lurley. Great, Buster, why don't you go on down the other end of the bar? How you doing, sugar pie? Don't touch me, Bubba. Miss Kate waiting outside with her shotgun? She's waiting for me back at the house. Say, I'm going down to the Dew Drop Inn. Why don't you come along with me? We do a little drinking, a little dancing. I'm in a hurry, Chuck. You're being rude. I don't like it. I'm in a hurry, Bubba. Well, you got in a hurry as soon as you saw me. Well, that'll be five dollars and thirty cents. How's Miss Kate? She's fine. I'll give her my best. I will. Good night, Chuck. Good night. See you around, Chuck. Yeah, when you're sober, Wadsworth, don't you ever come back in here drunk again. Where is he going? Oh, he went to look one last time for your documentary. Where? Well, he thought he might have left it in his car. Why don't you go back and enjoy the party? He was upset. Well, of course he was upset. He helped plan this surprise party for you, and he is furious with himself for having misplaced the documentary. How could he have misplaced it, Iris? Oh, actually, it's all my fault, Elliot. I gave both cassettes to Vivian, the one we made of the home movies, and your documentary, and somehow she misplaced the documentary. You should get your story straight. What do you mean? You're not a good liar, Iris. You never were. Oh, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. If something is wrong with Dennis, I want to know what it is. It's nothing I can't handle by myself, yeah, Elliot. I can see how you're handling it. Dennis saw me and immediately ran off somewhere. Well, look, we can't discuss this now. Well, where have you been? Oh, Mrs. Wheeler, you don't know. I had to walk all the way down uh, to... Never, never mind. Let her finish. Uh, return to the dining room, Vivian, and make sure our guests are enjoying themselves. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Carrington seems determined not to have a good time, but I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Wait a minute. You're not going anywhere until you tell me what's going on. Starting the car, sugar? Leave me alone, Bubba. Come on, huh? Oh, oh I love a little wildcat to fight with me. Come on, fight me. Oh, 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 oh. What's the matter with you, honey? Don't be so shy. Oh. Well, it was nice seeing you, too. I need a drink. Can I get you something? Um, how about a glass of white wine? Uh, Vicky, can I get you something mm. from the bar? Um, no thanks, TJ. Okay, I'll be right back. How you doing? Trying to have a good time. It gets easier, sweetheart. I hope so. This is exactly the kind of party that Max would have hated. Everyone dressed up, looking so formal. I know. I can't stop thinking about him. That's understandable, honey. Well, this isn't going to help me get on with my life, is it? You've already taken some very important steps. Thank you, Irina. Thank you. Hello. Irina, I understand congratulations are in order. Being made a board member and a vice president of World Oil. That's a real accomplishment, especially for a woman. Well, to 
tell you the truth, it was accidental, but I'm very happy about it. In fact, I'm even happier about Ryan Connor being vindicated, despite your efforts in trying to get him convicted on your new show. Just reporting the news. Of oh, course. Serena, the Davenports are over there. Why don't we go and say hello? Um, Mama, we've already talked to them. Rena, yes. I'd like to invite you to appear on my interview show. I think everyone would be interested in your views of what it's like to be one of the few women to make it big in the man's world of oil. Uh, Margaret, I was going to discuss that with Rena later. There's no need to discuss it later, Mama. I'd be happy to appear on your show, Maggie. Uh, Margaret. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I guess I heard Justin call you Maggie so many times. Look, whenever you want me to appear on your show, I will try to make myself available. Good. I'll be in touch. Good evening. Rena. What, Mama? Don't tangle with her. Not on television. You can't win. I'm just going to answer her questions. It shouldn't be too hard. I think you're making a big mistake, honey. I agree with Vicky. Well, I don't. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm waiting for your explanation, Vivian. What's going on? Tell me. I stepped out in the corridor outside the bar to look around and see if I could find some place where maybe Dennis had hidden the film. Hidden what film? The documentary? She's talking about the pornographic film that Paige appeared in. Dennis had it copied on a video cassette. Go on. So... I heard somebody coming. I stepped through a doorway and into a stairwell. I was looking around, there was a fire extinguisher. And behind it was a cassette that looked just like the one Mrs. Wheeler had given me. That's where he'd hidden the porno film? So I switched cassettes. I took the one Dennis had hidden and I replaced it with the one Mrs. Wheeler gave me, the one with the baby pictures. And Dennis came and picked up the wrong cassette. Right. And then when I tried to come back in here, the door was locked. So I had to walk all the way down to the ground floor and take an elevator back. I'm sorry. Oh, baby. <laughs> the important thing is you switch the cassettes. So everything turned out all right? Vivian, would you leave us alone for a minute? Tell me what Dennis was up to. I thought I could stop him, and I did. You didn't stop him from slipping the publicity stores under Paige's door. You knew about that, didn't you? That was obviously Dennis's doing. Yes, I knew about it. And I told him I didn't approve of what he was doing. How could you have let things come to this? I handled it the best way I could. You could have come to me or to Grant or to somebody instead of letting Dennis go merrily on his way. I did not let him go merrily on his way. And I am as upset about this as you are. But if you hadn't taken up with Paige in the first place, none of this would have happened. Where is Dennis now? I don't know. He may have gone home. Sorry, Mrs. Wheeler, I had to tell him. I don't blame you, Vivi. Paige, where's Elliot? Oh, he went to the bar to talk to Arthur. Vicky, could I speak with Paige for a moment? Certainly. Elliot, is something wrong? Oh, Dennis is a bit upset over the mix-up about the film, but he'll be all right. What is it? What's happened? Well, I can't take time to explain now. Dennis has left the party in a very bad state. I think I should find him and have a talk with him. I wonder how Rena's doing at that party. She's probably doing just fine. I don't know. It's the first time she's been out socially since Max died. You know what I think? I think you worry too much about Rena. 
Honey, she's been through a terrible time. Well, but she's doing much better than I'd expected. Did she go to the party with Vicky? No, she went with TJ. Well, I'm surprised. I don't think she liked him. Oh, well, obviously she's changed her mind. Well, that's great. I like TJ. And so does Jenny. Well, I did it first, but <laughs> I've changed my mind. Well, what changed your mind? Well, I don't know. I just, I got a feeling about him at our wedding reception. Mmm, that's Rena's influence, isn't No, it? it is not. I thought TJ was quite charming at the reception. Lurleen told me that Ashley and Justin were planning a reception for their wedding. Is that true? Well, he hasn't mentioned it lately. Mm, now that he's lost his job, they ought to forget the whole thing. Mm. And now that Ashley is pregnant. Mm. You don't think she's pregnant, do you, Kate? No. She says she is, but who knows? <laughs> I suppose so. Pauline! Pauline! Let me what go! Happened? Tell me what happened! Bubba. What about Bubba? He tried to rape me and he won't stop till he does. So I'm gonna go get my brother's gun and I'm gonna kill that man. Honey. Dennis, didn't you? That's the important thing. Oh, I don't know, Vivian. Maybe Elliot was right. Maybe I should have gone to someone right away, but I was afraid he would go through with his threat to make the agreement I signed public. I don't think he would have done that. No, I think he would have. In any case, it wasn't a chance I could afford to take. If only I hadn't put it in writing. I don't understand how you could have agreed something like that in the first place. I thought that Ryan Connor had killed my husband. And I needed Dennis's boat to drive him out of the company. It was as simple as that. But didn't you see how wrong it was to agree to help Dennis to embarrass Paige just to get his boat? I see I was wrong now. I was wrong about a great many things. But what good does that do me now? I only hope that Dennis is going to be all right. He will be, Mrs. Wheeler. What do you want? I want to know where Elliot and Dennis went. Haven't you done enough damage? None of this would have happened if it hadn't been for you. Mrs. Wheeler. None of what? You and that disgusting pornographic film you made. Dennis was going to show it tonight in an effort to make Elliot see you for what you really are. Dennis was going to show it here tonight. I think Elliot is a lost cause. I doubt that he will ever see you for the tramp you are, but I see it. I knew what you were the moment I set eyes on you. Is that why you arranged for Dennis and I to get together? You're as much responsible for our marriage as anyone, Iris. Everyone makes mistakes. 
And you, Paige, are the biggest mistake I ever made. You are cheap and filthy. Mrs. And Wheeler. choice but to tell everything I know. What are you talking about? If you think Houston society will be shocked at Paige's porno movie. Well, how do you think they're going to feel? How do you think they're going to feel when they find out how far you were willing to go to get Brian out of the company? Oh, well, it is just your word against mine. I'll deny everything. No, I don't think so. I'm just glad we put everything in writing. You wouldn't do that. Not as long as you cooperate. As long as you agree to have that party. No one need ever know. No one need ever know you were involved. Dennis. I suggest you do it right away. It may be difficult to invite the illustrious people of Houston at such short notice. And I want... I want... everyone who's anyone... to be at the top of the World Club when I show that film. Just a minute. safe here, little Lee, I promise you. Bubba hit you. I don't remember. Maybe it happened when I fell down running through the woods. Well, uh, where did you see Bubba? Was it at Burley's? He, he was there drinking. And he he followed me out and got into the truck. I, sh I should have locked the doors, but I didn't have the time. Did anybody see Bubba get in the truck? Uh, anybody try to help you? No, but... Uh, Parked in the back, it was dark. I never did anything to that man. I never smiled at him or led him on or anything. Honey, of course you didn't. We know that. It's so all nobody's blaming you. That's what I thought the first time. 
time he threatened me. And then again when, when Miss Kate held the shotgun on him. But it won't ever be over. Oh, yes, it will. I feel absolutely ghastly, Femi. I think you should go home, Mrs. Wheeler. I can't leave my guests. Yes, you don't seem to be having a very good time at your party. I'm not. Is there anything you want? She ought to go home, Mr. Wheeler. You're crying. Does it have anything to do with Dennis? It does, but I can't explain now. Where is he? I'm not sure. Elliot, Elliot went to find him. Iris told me what you were planning, Dennis. I want to talk with you. What about... about you and me? About your feelings toward Paige? You know how I feel about Paige. Do I? Dennis. Have you really continued seeing Dr. Jeffries as you told me you had? I didn't see a need to. You need guidance from someone. Dr. Jeffries said the feelings I had were very natural. That it would be odd not to be confused. Have you been completely honest with Dr. Jeffries about everything you felt? As honest as you've been with me. Maybe in the beginning I wasn't as honest as I could have been. I didn't know what my feelings were. You love Paige, right? <sighs> I care a great deal about her. You love her? Say it! I also love you. Dennis. Dennis, I want to help you. You leave me alone. Dennis. Dennis! This is going to sting just a little bit, but I want you to leave it up there for some help, all right? The sheriff's sending, uh... Harley out to arrest Bubba. He wants you to go down to his office and file a report. Right, and I'll go with you, honey. It won't do any good. Oh, I think it will. It's an important first step. You have to do it. We should have had Bubba arrested the first time he bothered you. Tell me, do you hurt anywhere else? Is it just that bruise on your face? I scraped my knees when I fell in the woods, but I'm all right. Oh, we better have we better have Doc Williams look at you. No. I'm okay. I just want to go to sleep. Honey, you can sleep when we get back from the sheriff's office. I don't want to go, Jimmy. It won't take long, and Ryan and I will be there with you. Yeah, we're going to be with you every second. And the sheriff's just going to want you to tell him what happened, and then he'll uh, file his report, and that'll be it. Then everyone in Texas will know what Bubba tried to do to me. Oh, no, they won't. The sheriff's going to keep it confidential. And Bubba's not going to want to be telling anybody why he was arrested. Well, what's the sheriff going to charge him with? Anything they'll hold up in court, including attempted rape. I want to go change my clothes. They're all torn and, and dirty. No, uh, I think uh, you better wear those clothes. The sheriff's going to want to see what Bubba did. I don't want anybody to see me like this. Honey, you can wear a, a jacket over your blouse, then nobody will know. Okay? I'm so scared. 
scared. Once Bubba's arrested, uh, you won't have to be afraid anymore. Iris, are you saying that Dennis was actually going to show that pornographic film tonight? And I don't think I handled it the best way possible. Oh, it wasn't your fault. You didn't make that damn film page, did There has been nothing but trouble ever since Dennis married that woman. Well, I can't understand why Elliot would have anything to do with her anyway. He knew about the film. Oh, Elliot is so busy forgiving everyone's faults. Except mine. He actually feels sorry for Paige. He thinks she's been done an injustice. Oh, Lord, Iris, the girl's a tramp. You know that, and I know that. And half of Houston almost found out about it tonight. Well, honey, it's over. No damage was done, so just try to forget about it. Dennis won't give up, Rena. What do you mean? He told me he had more than one copy of that porno film just in case I double-crossed him. What is he going to do with it? I have no idea. Do you know where he is? He left. Um, maybe I should go and try and find him. I can, I can talk some sense into him. Elliot went to find him. He's going to try to talk to him, but I don't think he'll succeed. My son is ill, Rena. I should have admitted that to myself long ago. I just hope it's not too late for him to be helped. Come on, honey. I'll take you home. Get it go. I st still have guests and I can't face these people. I must look a frightful mess. You can look better, honey. Raina, what will become of my son? Charlie McCarthy and Edgar Bergen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you greetings from the Mystic East. And now, with your kind indulgence, I shall delve into the mysteries of the occult. Hey, Bergen. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what's the racket? Racket? Yeah, young man, I happen to be gifted. Say not so. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> I'm a student of occultism. Of occultism? No, not occultism. No. no. What? Well, ism. 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 Ism what, dear? Oh. <laughs> I am the seventh son of the seventh son of the seventh son. Well, come on, seven. Do something. <laughs> well, what, what's, the, what's the globule for? You mean this? Yeah. The bowling ball. Well, do you know what I see when I look into that? Goldfish? No, no, no. no, no. What, what's it for? Well, you see, it helps me to focus my attention. Is that so? Yes. When I gaze into the crystal, a vision appears. There are. Yes. Well, I did not know an answer. Well, what's a vision? A vision? Yes. Yeah. What is a vision? Well, I ask you first. Yes, I don't. <laughs> well, a vision, well, it's very much like a mirage. Oh, it's like a mirage, yes. Oh, so that's what it is. Oh, it's a mirage, yes. yes. It was the mirage. A mirage. Wake up, George. Yeah, that's very much like a vision. Dennis! Uh, oh, you scared me. I didn't mean to scare you. Well, that's yet. okay. No. I, uh. <laughs> just didn't hear you come up. What are you doing here? You working late or something tonight? No, no, no. I just came by to pick up something. Hmm. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember one of the guys was telling me. But, uh, what, you having a big bash at the top of the World Club honoring your father? That's right. Uh, what'd you do, leave early or something? Well, it's over now. Oh. That's why I'm here. See, a bunch of guys are going to get together tonight for a little private party of their mm -hmm. own. Stag party? Yeah. I came by to pick up a film everybody's been anxious to see. Oh, yeah? Uh, what kind of film? Pornographic movie. No kidding. <laughs> and I have to sit here all night watching the, the millionth rerun of this thing. <laughs> Yeah, it must get pretty boring sitting around here all night. Dennis, you just don't know. Well, I think I have something here that uh, might just wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the uh, porn flick you're going to show at the stag party? Yeah. Want to take a look? Sure. But look, I don't want to make you late for the party. I won't be late. Besides, it's going to take a long time to round up all those guys. Hey. This isn't going to be a problem for your machine there, is it? No, 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 no. But look, if anybody finds out about this thing, it's not going to be shot. I won't breathe a word. 
Tell me something. Did it take you a long time to learn how to operate all these buttons and knobs? No, it's not as complicated as it looks. This isn't going to interfere with your transmission, is it? No, no, no. We're safe as long as we don't touch that switch right there. This switch right here? Hey, come on. Really, you do that and half of Houston's going to be watching this porno flick with us. Yeah? Yeah, I'll remember that. You know, I really think you're going to like this porno movie. It's not your average porno movie. I mean, it's got a lot of class, you know. Uh, is, it, is this far enough? Should be. Let's see what we got. Oh, Roy and I were just talking about it. It was nice. Lots of fancy people in fancy clothes. Well, it was mostly people that worked with Elliot and KVIK and some of his friends, but uh, there were a couple of people there you might call fancy. Oh, Roy, would you get that? Where's Elena? She'll Here be here go. any minute. Oh, I was uh, thinking that maybe she and I could sing a duet together. Hey. Uh, Ruby, uh, for you, some guy named Bo. Elaine, uh, the sheriff's going to ask you what happened, and... All you have to do is just try and be calm and answer all of his questions. Everything you can remember, like uh, what Bubba said when you first went into Burley's, how long you were there, uh, how Bubba got into the cab of your truck. I was so scared, I don't remember a lot of it. Now you can just take your time. Don't be nervous. I'm going to stay with you, uh, Sheriff. He's going to help all he can. He's a real good man. You've known him all your life, right? I can't do it. I'd feel so ashamed and embarrassed. Honey, if you don't file a complaint against Bubba, they can't arrest him. Justin didn't frighten him. Neither did I with my shotgun. The sheriff's the only one who can take care of him. Now, if you don't tell him, Bubba will keep on bothering you. You've just got to stop it now. Is this the uh, porn flick you're going to show at the stag party? Yeah. Want to take a look? Sure. But look, I don't want to make you late for the party. I won't be late. Besides, it's going to take a long time to round up all those guys. Hey, this isn't going to be a problem for your machine there, is it? No, 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 no. But look, if anybody finds out about this thing, I'm going to be shot. I won't breathe a word. Tell me something. Did it take you a long time to learn how to operate all these buttons and knobs? No, it's not as complicated as it looks. This isn't going to interfere with your transmission, is it? No, no, no. We're safe as long as we don't touch that switch right there. This switch right here? Hey, come on. Really, you do that and half of Houston's going to be watching this porno flick with us. Yeah? Yeah, I'll remember that. <laughs> you know, I really think you're going to like this porno movie. It's not your average porno movie. It's got a lot of class, you know. Uh, is, it, is this far enough? Should be. See what we got. Bo, you couldn't have gone through that 5,000 I gave you already. But I'm going to give it to you, but money doesn't grow on trees. Is that right? From what your brother said, you're rolling in dough. Well, Billy Joe has a tendency to exaggerate sometimes. Look, Bo. I can't talk to you right now. Looks like you got a pretty good crowd there tonight. Yeah, well, that's why it's a little difficult to talk. So why didn't you take the call in your office? Because I don't want anybody thinking I got something to hide. What you do, don't you? Look, I'll call you tomorrow and we'll have a good long talk. I want to talk tonight, Ruby. Tonight's no good. It's good for me. I want you to come here at the motel after you get through with the coop. I can't do that, Bo. Then I'll come there. Wait until we have more time. I want to see you, Ruby. I'm tired of lying around this motel room all the time doing nothing. Besides, I missed you since you walked out of me in Nashville. A lot. And now I'm going to make up for lost time. Bo! Bo! Sorry I took so long. Oh, that's all right. Roy and I were just talking about my flying lessons. Oh, yeah? Well, how are they coming? They're coming fine. I ought to have my license in a couple of weeks. Who's Bo? After you leave the sheriff, Jenny'd better take you by Doc Williams' place. That headache could be a slight concussion. 
I'll just take some aspirin and I'll be all right. Well, let's do that before we go see the sheriff. Well, I want to change clothes. Helene. Honey, just keep this jacket on. Come on, let's go get some aspirin. There is the kitchen cabinet. Hey! <laughs> Give me that hat. Oh, hey, Lillene. I saw your truck parked out back of Burley's Barbecue. What's wrong? I was in a wreck. Maybe were you hurt? No, I'm, I'm fine. Justin. Lurleen went over to Burley's to pick up an order. Bubba was there. And? And he tried to rape her. She managed to get away. Hey, Justin, I want you to stay here. I'm going to find Bubba. No, no, no. We called the sheriff, and Harley's going to arrest Bubba, so you just stay out of it. I told Bubba if he's the one just touched Lulee, now he's going to kill him. I know that, but I want the law to handle this. He's right, sweetheart. There are lots of cars and trucks parked outside of the Burleys. Why didn't somebody try to stop Bubba? Because no one saw him with her, that's why. She got out of the truck, and she walked back here. Well, I hope that the sheriff will be able to keep him in jail. Well, I hope he throws the book at him. He will. Maybe. I wouldn't count on Bubba staying in jail for very long. Put it back. Come on, Dad. I said put it back! Give it to me, for <laughs> Hey, Mr. Carrington, it's, uh, we're just having some fun here. It's just an old porn film. Dennis, I want that cassette. No. You're not going to leave this room until I have it. What's going on here? I want everyone in Houston to see what my wife has done. It's no one in Houston's concern, Dennis. Oh, no. That thing was going out on the air? You had no right to come here! Dennis, I couldn't let you do this. Not to Paige, not to yourself. Somebody please tell me what's going on. George, I want to be alone with Dennis. Look, Mr. Carrington, I don't want to lose my job. You won't lose your job. I take full responsibility for what's happened here tonight. I have to talk to my son. Well, look, I'm about to switch to a commercial break in about five minutes. Then so... give me five minutes. Oh, it's a guy I know from Nashville. He's in the music business? Yeah, he's a songwriter. He's in town looking for work. He keeps calling me up to see if I know about anything. Well, is he any good? He can be. Well, maybe I ought to have him write something for me. Well, he's coming over so you can ask him. Huh. Hi, Elena. Hi. Hey, how was your party? Hey, it was fine. Good. How's Joe? It's much better. I just came from the hospital. Any word yet about what's going to happen to him? Well, we won't know that till after the arraignment. We do after he's out of the hospital. What about a lawyer? You're talking to one now, aren't you? No, he doesn't want me to get anyone. Well, he's got to have a lawyer. That's what I keep telling him. If you all will excuse me, I'm going to go in the back room and see if the band's ready to start. Ruby, um, that, that friend of yours, Bo, is he going to be here before the show? I don't know. Have you met Bo yet? No, uh, but Ruby said he's on his way over. Have you met him? Mm-hmm. I was in the coop when he dropped into town the other day. He says he's a songwriter. Yeah? Yeah, maybe he could write us a duet like slow dancing. That would be nice. Well, I'm going to go back and talk to the band. I'll be right back. It's Lillian's word against Bubba. The law always favors the man. Oh, not always. Almost always, yeah. You know that lawyer in Marshall Village? It's his name, Thompson. Never heard of him. He's an expert on technicalities. He's also a friend of Bubba's. And so are you. Look, Connor, I have business dealings with Bubba. I don't intend to let him, let him get away with something like this, though. Brian? You ready, honey? I think we better go before Lillian changes her mind. Yeah. And I think that you better calm down. I don't understand how Bubba could hurt somebody like Lillian. It's because he's arrogant and vicious. Now, I hope you'll end your association with him once and for all. I just hope that the sheriff will keep him in jail for a while. I should have wrapped Bubba right around the nearest telephone pole the moment he bothered Lurleen. I'm just so sorry about Lurleen. 
So am I. I'm just glad that Ginny was here. Yeah. Have they heard anything from Steve? Yeah. The highway patrol found out where Barrett had rented the car. Well, then they know where they're headed. All right. Well, Barrett told the people that he was going to leave the car in Richmond. Oh, who wants one? So, Ginny and Ryan were going to fly down there tomorrow. The car was spotted and reported to the highway patrol. Well, at least now they'll be able to chart his progress, right? Yes. Well, the... The highway patrol talked to some people in a filling station where Barrett had stopped. Steve told one of the attendants that they were going to Montana. Montana? Well, who is Barrett lying to? The rental people or to Steve? The rental people. He knows that Jenny and Ryan are after them now. Yeah. So now you'll be very careful, won't he? Poor Jenny. I feel so sorry for her. They haven't found Bubba yet. I'm going to look for him. Justin. Justin, wait. Justin! What you did was wrong. There's no more wrong than what Paige did. What Paige did was in the past. She tried to take you away from me. No one could ever do that, Dennis. Not Paige, not anyone. I want you to give me the casino. No. I want you to come with me. We'll talk to Dr. Jeffries. We'll see him together. I don't want to see him. What do you want? You, Dad. I want you. You've always had that. I want Paige to be punished for what she's done. I'll do anything to help you get through this. I mean that. Anything. You lied to me, Dad. You lied to me. I'm so sorry. I trusted you. <laughs> and you lied. I want you to trust me again. I want you to believe that I care what happens to you. I love you, Dad. I love you. I love you, too, son. I love you. More than you know. Oh, my God, don't hurt me. It's going to be all right. Started already? Yes, it has. You don't look very happy to see me. Go. I work here. I didn't come here to start anything. I came here to meet your friends. The trouble is, looks like I missed out. Yeah, well, they're all in the back room listening to Elena sing. You get a cut of that, too? I don't handle Elena, just Ricky. And he's here tonight, so you better not say anything in front of him. About our little secret. That's exactly what I mean. 
What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Overtime. I don't trust you either, so we're even. Hey, give me a beer, will you? Shame on you for not offering a friend a drink. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, sir, I'm really looking forward to meeting this here Ricky Decker. Here's to him. How's he doing, Doctor? Well, he was rather agitated when Elliot brought him in, but we've given him a mild sedative and he seems to be calming. Is Elliot in with him now? Yes. Is he going to be all right? Well, if you mean, uh, is he suffering from some classic schizophrenia or some other such thing, uh, I would say no. But he has had a serious nervous collapse. But he will recover. Oh, he should, but it may take a while. I really won't know until I've talked to him further. He's just been under a terrible strain these last few months. You're talking about him being jailed? Yes. I don't think he ever really recovered from that. He blames me somehow. You divorced shortly after his uh, conviction was overturned? And I think Dennis still holds me responsible. Actually, I am in a way. Paige. It won't help matters for you to start blaming yourself. I love him, Doctor. I really do. But I don't think that even Dennis will believe that now. He's convinced that I married him for his money. It's a little notion that his mother put in his head. From what I gather, Mrs. Wheeler is a very strong woman. I think Iris is more responsible than anyone for what's happened to Dennis. No one person or event is responsible. Dennis lived a very well-protected life. Getting a divorce and then being sentenced to prison. Well, those things would have been difficult for anyone to deal with. But for Dennis, they were very overwhelming. How do you mean? He doesn't seem to have any close circle of friends other than his mother or father to depend on or to take counsel from. No, you're right. He doesn't. I think your marriage was the first step for Dennis, towards severing that bond between mother and son, I think he found that bond more difficult to break than he thought it would be. Now, can I help you? Yeah, I'm Ryan Connor. I uh, talked to the sheriff earlier. Uh, yes. I know all about it. Is the sheriff in? Well, he had to take a call, but he'll be right back. I want to leave. We just got here. It won't take long. Now, sit down. Has Bubba been arrested yet? No. Maybe he left town. I hope so. If he left town, there's no way they can catch him. There's no reason for me to be here. We just don't know that yet. He asked me to go with him to the... Do you drop in? Maybe he's there. Did you hear that, deputy? That's the first place we checked. Maybe I should have gone with him. I could have gotten him so drunk. No, no, no. <laughs> you did the right thing. Are you cold? Scared. Honey, it's going to be all right. Do you see the way the deputy keeps looking at me? He's concerned. He knows that you, what you're going through right now. Jenny, I'm so tired. And my head hurts. I know, I know, baby. We'll go back to the ranch soon, okay? I should have taken my gun and gone after Bubba myself. And you would have been arrested, not Bubba. I don't care. Well, I do. I know all about guns, and I'm not afraid to use one. Sheriff? Ginny. Hello, Orly. Hello. I understand you had a run-in with Bubba Wadsworth. It was not a run-in. He wanted to rape me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make it sound unimportant. Now, let's go on in and talk, huh? Oh, 
It's fun to be back. You sang real pretty, Elena. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. I'm a little rusty since I've been away for a while, but I'm working on it. Sounds to me like you don't need any improvement at all. Oh, you say the nicest things. Well, oh, Ruby tells me you're a songwriter, among other things. Well, my sister and I here were wondering if you might be interested in um, maybe working on some material for us. If you're going to be hanging around uh, Houston for a while, that is. I am, and I'd like that. You sing country western too? Well, I leave the country and western to my sister here, but I'll tell you, we could do a mean duet together, a mean country duet. <laughs> That's right, you sing at the top of the world, Cloud. Don't you think you should leave this kind of deal into your manager? <laughs> well, you better get to work then. <laughs> well, I think you should hear some of Bo's songs first. Hmm. Why don't you talk to Andy, and maybe we could run down some of your stuff tomorrow at Elena's rehearsal. That's an idea. Bo, you said you knew Ruby from Nashville. Did y'all work together? As a matter of fact, we did. Ruby here is my manager. She's good, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Bo, we could go talk to Andy right now, see if we can set something up for tomorrow. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't bring any of my material with me right now. Oh, that's okay. You know, you could just give him an idea of what you think might work for uh, Ricky and Elena. Ricky, would you mind walking me home? Oh, no problem. You live nearby, Elena? Yes, I live in an apartment above the beauty parlor down the street. Be right back, Ruby. Don't worry, I'll be here. You know, it's amazing. Two weeks ago, I was ready to throw in the towel, and and now it's like a whole new world opening up for me. Well, it is. And you know what makes it even more perfect, Ellie? What? It's the fact that Dennis is doing so well. I've been so worried about him. I know you have been, too. It meant a lot to me to hear you say that he was handling things so well. I know. You know, I think his finding about finding out about my film upset him more than he ever let us know. Yes, I think you're right. But he seems finally to be handling all of that. I'm glad. He's better. Dr. Jeffries is in with him again. Thought I should leave them alone. <sighs> Dennis didn't want me to leave. I think he feels I'm all he has now. How did you know that he was going to KVIK? <laughs> I didn't. I realized that he must have used KVIK's facilities to transfer the film to video cassette. So I went to see if he'd made another copy. One of the men saw him come into the building. It's just luck. But none of the film was transmitted? No. Only a few seconds at the beginning, but nothing damaging. You're not responsible for what's happened to Dennis. That's funny. It's just what Dr. Jeffries said to me. I can't help feeling responsible, Elliot. Dennis was right, you know. I did start seeing him because Iris told me that he was going to be heir to the Wheel of Fortune. Well, then I blame Iris for that. Elliot. Elliot, when are you going to see that I'm not the person that you think I am? Don't do this. Don't what? Tell you? Make you see what I am? Don't you see? If you take responsibility for what's happened, it's like saying that everything Dennis has done is right, and it's not. 
There is a man in there trying to make Dennis see that. Am I going to have to convince you of the same thing? I'm not sure you can. What Dennis did was wrong. Bringing Jack Brent to the top of the World Club to embarrass you, trying to show that film, those aren't the acts of a rational human being. If you're going to take credit for those acts, then, then perhaps you should be under Dr. Jeffrey's care as well. Maybe I should be. I'm sorry. It's been a long, difficult day. I don't mean to get angry. But I have fought very hard for you. And now you're making me feel like it's all been for nothing. Maybe it has. I stopped by Burley's and Chuck said that uh, Bubba was drunk. He was. He followed you out to the truck. Uh, did you open the door for him? Of course I didn't. You don't lock your doors? Uh, I do at the shopping center, but at Burley's... Are you suggesting that she invited Bubba to join her in the truck? I'm not suggesting anything. Tell me what happened, huh? He opened the door and got in the truck before I knew what was happening. What did he say to you? Well, I don't, I don't remember. You know, he asked me to go to the dew drop in with him. Have you uh, dated Bubba before? No. Did he ever ask you to go out? Yes, but I didn't go. I don't like him. But you did say hello to him tonight at Burley's. No, I didn't. I asked him to leave me alone. This is the third time Bubba's tried to force himself on Lurleen. She didn't report it. I was scared. Were there any witnesses? Yeah, the second time Kate showed up with a shotgun. That's the only reason he didn't rape her then. You ran almost a mile back to the ranch tonight. Why didn't you just run into Burley's and call me? I don't know. I, I was scared. I just wanted to get away from him. You only had to run 20 or 30 feet into Burley's. You could have called anyone. I was scared. I wasn't thinking straight. I just wanted to go home. Do you have a boyfriend? No, not really. Do you date a lot of boys? Are you on the pill? Sheriff, I don't think this is necessary. It has nothing to do with tonight's incident. Look, I'm just trying to determine. Bubba, I have this... never been to bed with a man, especially Bubba Wadsworth. Ah, so maybe he wasn't trying to rape you at all. I know! Look, if you think this girl's having uh, some kind of fantasies, you better think again, Sheriff. Now, no one knows Bubba Wadsworth but better than you, and cer certainly you know Lurleen Harper. It doesn't matter that I know about Bubba or Lurleen. I have to have evidence in order to arrest someone, and I'm not sure I have any. Bubba Wadsworth was going to rape me tonight, and if you're not going to do something about it, I will. <laughs> Rehearsals at three, Bo. I know. I heard you the first time. I suggest you get here early so you can go over the material with Andy first. Yes, sir. I think everything's going to work out just fine for everybody concerned. Ricky and Elena Deck are going to be singing songs by Bo Baker. And Bo Baker's going to be very nicely paid by Ricky Decker's manager, Ruby Wright. Just be here before three. Sure thing, boss. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to do. Hey, don't rush off on my account. Hey, you've been working all day. Isn't it time for a little relaxation? I can't leave here until I get everything all set for tomorrow. Oh, I was kind of looking forward to you coming home with me tonight. Well, you'll have to look forward to something else because I can't do that. I'm tired of sleeping alone, really. Get a dog. I got my own apartment. All right, then I can come there. No, you can't. I can't. I live with Ricky. So, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. And does Ricky Decker know he's living with a married woman? Aren't you going in to uh, 
talk to Dennis? Iris and Elliot are in there. I can wait. As a matter of fact, it might be better if I came back tomorrow. Dr. Jeffrey said that they had to give him a sedative. Yes, yeah, what I understand. I hope he's all right. Oh, he'll be fine. He's in good hands. He's got the support and love of his family. He'll be all right. The question is, Paige, how are you? Oh, I'll be all right. I was told what Dennis tried to do tonight. I'm sorry about that. I think I speak for the whole Wheeler family by saying that I'm sure that he didn't know what he was doing. The film is meant to be shown. I don't think I can blame Dennis for that. You really believe that? <sighs> I don't know what I believe anymore. Uh, you haven't known Dennis for long, have you, Grant? No, I haven't. And not very well, either. He's a wonderful man. When I first married him, he was the kindest, most gentle, most thoughtful man I'd ever met. For the first time in my life, I really felt special. I destroyed that. I can't forgive myself. I'm not doubting your word, Lurley, but I've got to have some kind of proof. Otherwise, Bubba will say that you're lying, that you just led him on and uh, changed your mind. I didn't do that. I know that, but if you want to put this guy away, we've got to have a stronger case. Well, you can charge him with about ten counts, starting with drunk and disorderly conduct. That's just what I intend to do. But when it comes to the attempted rape, we're in trouble. You're saying I should have let him rape me so you'd have a stronger case. I knew I never should have come Lurleen, here. Lurleen, try and take it easy. Now, the sheriff's going to do everything he can to keep Bubba in jail for, for, for as long as possible. I promise I'll do everything I can. I'm sorry about the questions, honey, but uh, I have to ask them. Sheriff, if there's nothing more, I'd, I'd like to take Lurleen home and put her to bed. Nothing more tonight. You call me as soon as you rest, Bubba? Sure. When we do get him, I'll throw the book at him. And hope for the best. Thank you. You've been telling lies about me. Get him out of here, Lurleen. I'm going to make you pay for it, little lady. You hear me? I'm going to make you pay for it. This new songwriter, Bo, seems like a guy with a lot on the ball. What's the material like? I'll see you tomorrow. How'd you meet? Through friends. Seems like a nice guy. He's all right. Doesn't sound like a very strong endorsement. Bo can be a little pushy at times. Well, Ruby, you've uh, told me to be a little pushier. What's on your mind? Business. Want me to take your mind off of business?
It's nice living with you. Is it? And maybe we ought to buy a house. In fact, maybe we ought to buy that ranch you're always talking about. Would you like that? Sure. We could put a recording studio in the back. You sound like a manager. You feeling threatened? A little. Good. Where's Paige? She asked me to tell you that she went back to her hotel. She all right? Oh, yeah. As well as she can be under the circumstances. Iris told you? Yeah. How is Dan? He's asleep. Iris wanted to stay with him a little longer. Elliot, I spoke with the doctor. He doesn't know how long he's going to have to keep Dennis here, but he figures probably about a week. I keep thinking about a time when the situation was reversed. I was in the hospital room under the doctor's care. Dennis looking after me. When I was here, everyone had turned against me. But Dennis wouldn't go along. I owe him. Where did Janine and Lurleen? Oh, they're on their way. They dropped me off at Burley's and uh, I drove Lurleen's truck back here. Oh. Did you file a complaint against Bubba? Yeah, sure hope it does some good. What does that mean? Well, based on Lurleen's story, it's going to be awfully hard to prove attempted rape. He did try to rape her. It's Lurleen's word against Bubba's. But the sheriff's going to present enough charges against them to keep them in jail for a while, so we just have to see what happens. How is Lurleen? Uh, we took her by Doc Williams. He gave her some pills. Uh, I hope they'll do some good. Where's Ashley and Justin? Ashley's upstairs. Justin's gone to look for Bubba. Bubba was arrested. He's at the sheriff's office now. Well, then he didn't get to Bubba first. Well, I sure wish Justin had got to him before that deputy did. As we were leaving, they were bringing Bubba in, and he said uh, something pretty nasty to Lurleen. She was so scared, she almost fainted. It's all over. You're all right now. It's not over, Miss Kate. It's just beginning. I've known the sheriff for a long time now. I'm sure he'll see that Bubba gets what he deserves. Bubba told me he was going to make me pay for turning him in. Everybody heard him and he means it. Oh, but he can't do anything to you if he's in jail. He won't forget it. I know he won't. Aline, I want you to go to bed now. I don't want to be alone. You won't be alone. I'll stay with you. Right and I'll be here too. Maybe that's Justin. Hello? Justin said he was going to go look for Bubba. That's what I should have done. No, it is not. Okay, thanks. Was it Justin? No, it was a sheriff. Judge Turner's granting bail. Bubba's going to be released. <laughs> 